Hello, friends. Welcome to this tradition unlike any... <laughs> What is up, everyone? Welcome in to Big Drive Energy. And as you can see, we've got some special guests here today. We've got Broncos linebackers, Alex Singleton and Justin Cernad. What's up, boys? Thanks for joining us. Appreciate it. Yeah, appreciate you having us on. <laughs> yeah, what's good, guys? <laughs> Look at Justin. Who wants to go on. first? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So uh, we brought these boys on. We're going to talk about the city of Denver. Uh, neither of them are from here, of course, but now they both live here. Um, what it's like to live in Denver, uh, what it's like to golf in Denver, because I know for sure uh, playing with Justin a few times, it's fucking way different than where he grew up in Tampa. Oh, yeah. Well, when we went down and played in Tampa, it was way different. Yeah, it's fucking ridiculous. Like, you can't hit the ball anywhere there. Yeah. Like, it, and you get up here, and it's just fucking moonshot. Yeah, it yeah. just keeps going on you. Exactly. Uh, so first of all, uh, Justin, for those of you guys who don't know, his nickname is Garbs. Fucking funniest thing ever. I couldn't <laughs> figure out why any, everybody was calling him that. So before we get into the reason for that nickname, Alex, do you have any nicknames that you'd like to share so we can call you that? No. <laughs> no, just Alex. Yeah, just Alex. Just straight up know. Alex. Love yeah. it. Okay. <laughs> Nothing that you want to admit. I'm not going to incriminate myself. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> One <laughs> minute into this. Okay. So. <laughs> Perfect. Oh, we got plenty of time. We'll All right. There. So Garbs, why don't you tell everybody why your nickname is Garbs? Yeah, so I mean, I got an older brother, um, and growing up, I mean, he kind of took advantage of that role, you know what I mean? And he, I mean, he had he had the upper, he had the advantage growing up, you know. He was a little older, he got stronger before I did, all that type of stuff. So he could beat me in a lot of things growing up, and he kind of always used to just mess with me and call me garbage, <laughs> and like it kind of just like stuck. Like he started calling me, like, and it, it was like to antagonize me at first. And then as I continued to play sports and growing up, like everyone in my family was just like, hey, Garbs, like Garbs, Garbs. And now, I mean, no one in my family calls me Justin. It's just Garbs, like everyone in the family. See, I think that's dope, though, because you're when you tell everybody that's your nickname, nobody can like talk. You're like, I my nickname's garbage. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. Nobody who's going to talk shit to me. I literally call myself. (laughs) Exactly. I respect that. But. It's also kind of funny because you're in the fucking NFL, <laughs> so yeah, you're, it works out. Yeah. yeah, it worked out pretty well. I think uh, I think Nick would trade places with you if he could, but exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, first of all, how's OTAs going? I know for you, you've been a Bronco for a couple of years. You're new to the scene. What's like? What's uh, the feel this year? Because I just from an outsider's perspective, obviously it's it seems like a blast. Hackett seems like a fucking lunatic, but he seems fun. How how is that feel this year compared to especially compared to like the last couple of years? You want it? It's your first OTA. Right? Yeah, it's yeah. your first full one, isn't it? Yeah, it actually yeah, is. Yeah, look you know. Yeah, no, so <laughs> <young> buck, I mean <laughs> Yeah, I mean it's been good. I mean it's from a from a coaching standpoint and a team standpoint, I will say it's a lot different from um the previous two years. Um obviously my first year I was injured so it was a little different but like just the staff like hack it like you said like it's 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 really exciting to come to work every day you know what I mean like just they got we got hoops in in the meeting rooms and although you're there to handle business and with everything they make it like fun to an extent I mean today we we finished practice and two of the coaches raced each other to end practice you know what I mean (laughs) stuff like that just keep the energy high you know it's it's been good but as far as OTAs have gone, I mean, it's it's been awesome. I mean, having Alex join the room has been cool. Um, Josie, Jonas, everybody, um, Barrington, and some of the young guys. I mean, we've all been working hard and having Russell out there pushing. Obviously, he's pushing the offense hard, but, I mean, to compete against him day in and day out is obviously pretty crazy growing up watching him. So Yeah, 100%. And that's what's crazy is, like, you're young enough to where, like, he doesn't seem that old. But then you realize he's been in the NFL. I think this is what is going to be his eleventh year. Yeah, you're like Fuck that's you. fucking insane. Like yeah. that's absolutely nuts. Um, I saw Hackett running routes the other day. Didn't wasn't he pretty fucking good out at wideout? Yeah, he, Did, he's got who, a little movement. Who was he him. running yeah. against? Was it Simmons was trying to cover him? Uh, it was some. I, I they posted something on social media, but. He's always um, doing something offensively. Yeah, like, dude. He seems like I need whatever drugs he's on because that <laughs> dude's just going like all the time, like. His energy's on another level, and yeah. the difference between him and Fangio, you can just tell in the room, like, being an outsider, you can tell there's just a different vibe. So, yeah. you coming from Philadelphia mm-hmm. last year, what's what's the difference there? Like, is there... Was, is it a little bit more low key here? Or a little bit more, a little bit more energy. You know, being I was in Philly, you know, the last three years, and we went through a coaching change. You know, the Doug Peterson, uh, Jim Schwartz era of Philly. You know, the Super Bowl, <laughs> the uh, 2017 Super Bowl, and that was 
you know, a good coaching staff. You know, I, you know, I love those guys. But then uh, last year, Nick Sirianni came in from the Colts, who's that kind of younger coaching staff vibe, kind of like we have here now. And so I think when, you know, you bring in – and I wouldn't even say Philly was a bad situation. I think we had that down year in 19 and, you know, 20 obviously made the playoffs and, you know, 17, 18, 19. Yeah, talk about know, a roller coaster. <laughs> so, you know, it, you know, it's just a roller coaster situation. I mean, that's yeah. just Philly in general. But, uh, mm-hmm. you know, it, it's kind of how it is here, you know, just how they talk like – you know, the situation, but you know, players and coaches, whatever it was last year is what it was. I think people saw it from the outside and just the energy, the competitiveness, the excitement like you're seeing from, you know, Hackett. That's what we had in Sirianni and Philly. It brings this new energy, this excitement. And obviously, you know, they're offensive first coaches. So the competitiveness is fun because, you know, they're always back in the quarterbacks. They're back in the receivers. So and defense is usually the first ones to start talking shit. You know, they're <laughs> the first ones, you know, the first day of any any training camp, any any competitive time, usually in football defense, you know, it's not the installs aren't as long it's not as much so you know we we fine-tune it a little faster so you're kind of going out there the first few days and you're you're beating up the offense yeah and they don't have a lot to say for a while but then eventually you know they start clicking you know like we saw you know russell you know russell's new with a bunch of new receivers and you know it takes a little bit and you know once you know it does click you know and it it clicks four or five times in a row you know we're out there like dang you know hackett's running down the field (laughs) celebrating you're like god damn it like (laughs) yeah it kind of kind of flips on you a little bit flips and that's you know that's what the new energy the excitement that you know a, a team that's you know definitely you know you feel the buzz you know just going anywhere in the city uh okay you uh you can tell and that you know that's how it is at practice too it's how it is in the building every day it, it's an exciting time obviously that, to be a denver that's Bronco. fucking awesome dude i love that so who is the biggest shit tra- talker on defense and who's the biggest shit talker on offense and I don't know if your guys answers are going to be the same so you guys can go separate but i would say k-jack and hack it <laughs> Really? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. K Jack's a no brainer defensively. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, he gets a bunch of vet days. He's out there just you know, he's gonna let you know how he feels every single day. Oh, for sure. Offensively yeah, I mean, yeah, I probably probably hack it. Probably <laughs> hack it. I, that's I think, awesome. Yeah. I you know, Russell's such a like down to business guy. He'll celebrate and he he's more like a, I'll build the offense up. We're a team, so I'm not gonna tear you guys down. And yeah. you know, a lot of guys on defense are like, Yeah, well, we don't give a shit. <laughs> like, or, or, yeah, right. Like oh, like you almost <laughs> want that sometimes. You're you like, know? Dude, talk shit to me. Like yeah. but it also pisses you off when you get cooked and then the He's like, oh, dude, it's okay, or just doesn't say anything. You're like, I'd rather get talk shit to. Like, yeah. don't don't treat oh, it like 100%. it's okay because I'm like, pissed. Hey, good, off. Yeah. It was good coverage. I just read it. You're like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. You're like, exactly. fuck off, dude. Yeah. You just beat me. Like that was bad on my part. So okay, I I feel that. That's dope. But I would definitely say you know, a little bit of hack it lately, dude. At that's these first that's few weeks, awesome, which is bro. the same. I think it's just that competitive energy that and just like, like pushing you, see. you guys. Yeah, 100. percent You know, it's even like pre-practice. Like you know, how the coach is always like walk up and down the lines you know he'll you know come up and be like yeah yesterday was fun wait for today yeah. <laughs> oh, just like, oh, okay yeah. here we go that sounds like which it. makes it fun though yeah, yeah for sure that's it uh so like in otas like every year you see it like it, it surfaces from some teams on twitter like the team gets in a fight and i love i love it personally i think that shit's electric do you guys like like what is what do you guys feel about that like obviously it's hot out like it's fucking hot today mm. you guys are out there fucking you know sweating your ass off you're fucking getting you know especially if like Hackett's doing shit or like they I mean it's practice so they gotta set shit up so the offense can do certain things and you really can't you're not supposed like you're supposed to stop it but at the same stop time you're supposed all. to let them do their shit <laughs> you're like, but like not my how, how do you guys feel about like when shit like that happens you guys is it like is it like a room versus a room thing where the, the linebacker's like, yo, we're getting fucking, I'm sick of this shit. We're going to shove somebody around and it's cool. Or, or is it like not a good thing? Because they always like talk about all oh, that shows Divides that they're, a locker yeah, room exactly, and stuff and shit like, like that. that. I mean, I think it goes both ways. Like in the game of football, you, you got to have like a mindset. You know what I mean? Like a nobody's going to mess with you type of mind. You know what yeah. I mean? Type of that. And it's just when that stuff like that happens, it's like, all right, you got two competitive guys kind of like, I mean, last year's. I think the last couple of years, Bulls and Chubb always go at it. Like, and I mean, it's just you're too. When you got a field full of just competitive guys, you know, what I mean, that's what they've been doing their whole life. Like, you get beat, you're gonna want to beat someone else. Like, you know, yeah, what I you're mean? legit like, fighting for your job out there. Yeah, like, it's just no, exactly. Yeah. You're literally fighting to provide for your family. Yeah, and, you know what I mean. And I would just say it's just you got to be smart. Like, it's not worth it to like punch <laughs> your teammate and then you're you're out for the season or something. You know what I mean? That doesn't help the team, but. I mean, in the game of football, I think you're always going to have things like that. Yeah, I'm sure there's heated moments where you're like, I just want to beat the shit out of this dude. Like, I don't care who he is, if he's my teammate mm-hmm. or whatever, but, like, you feel like you get punked or some shit, and you're like, I'm like, I'm not playing. Yeah. Like, I, yeah, I yeah. could see how that would happen. And it so. is such a, like, 
position wise more thing. Like you always see DBs and receivers because they're always you know one on ones is a super competitive time in the day. Yeah. Uh, I would say O line and D line are big. Linebackers kind of fit into that. If you do a lot of team periods that day, linebackers kind of you know that front seven will fight. But it's not you know li- like running backs rotate so much when you're in that you could hate one, but you won't see him for six more plays. So by yeah. the time you're back up to like you don't hate the guy anymore, you're like I'm tired. I just ran five more plays. I don't. Do whatever you want. Like I'm For just sure. gonna tag off and then go make this next call. Yeah, no joke. And those guys, but yeah, you see, I mean, I uh, especially the the dudes who do one on ones all the time, the O line, D line. Then it carries over into team period, team one, team two. Okay, seven on now. They're they're doing uh, you know, one on ones on air, but they're still talking shit to each other. They yeah. come back to the team period. Now it's team pass. Okay, first two moves. Whatever happens, they're going. Like, well, yeah. It, it's been building the it's whole It's like time. if you played the same team 16 weeks over because yeah. you're you're facing the same – if you're one, you're number one and they're, they're number one, like you're facing them all summer. Yeah. So it's just mm-hmm. like I'm sure that animosity builds up and over time it just probably boils over a little bit. But. Oh, yeah. Well, especially now, like we're in helmets right now. So no one's really – you don't fight as much in OTAs. Like if people do, it, it does happen, you know, but it's not – it's not huge. It usually kind of builds up right now because we get we get we, uh, weekends off. You know, we okay, have days yeah. off every couple of days. So Thank God. It's not you know it's not the nineteen days in a row grind where you don't see another person. You're in the for same sure. locker room with these dudes for twelve hours a day. So you kind of it builds now. You can feel you know. Yeah. You kind of start. Everyone starts picking who they you know they don't like. I don't like how that guy <laughs> pulled me. And you remember? I mean, everyone remembers it for the next you know two months, especially when we go home in a week. Oh yeah. You go home for a month and a half, and you're just like. I hate that dude. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, I don't fucking like that yeah. guy. Yeah, and then you get into camp and it's just it's all day in, day out for what? I don't know, so many days. And I mean, people just obviously get frustrated or yeah. fatigued, whatever it is. And it just, it's just stuff builds up in camp. For sure. Oh, I'm sure. Well, speaking of helmets, have you ever, like, I think the one of the single dumbest things in football is when dudes punch somebody else in the fucking <laughs> helmet. Like, you, how bad does that hurt? Have you guys, have either of you ever punched somebody in the helmet? I mean, never in like a fight, but you've definitely like had your hand hit a helmet. Oh, it's, for I sure. I mean, I've shattered my thumb just on a helmet. Somebody on a helmet. Oh, and, like, fuck. So yeah, that I mean, it happens. You uh, guys, and or it, it, even better is when a guy gets in a fight and takes his helmet off and drops it and tries to fight a guy with a helmet. It's like <laughs> right. Uh, who? What? <laughs> yeah, that doesn't fucking happen. Uh, probably up. not the winner. Yeah, I, I just think it's probably about the dumbest fucking thing you can do. <laughs> like when you see some guy just swing it. Was it AJ Green? Yeah, when he, uh, Jalen Ramsey. He, oh, yeah, 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 on top of him, I'm like, dude, you're probably just hurting yourself right now. Yeah. But yeah. I guess when you get that piss, it just exactly. kind of happens. So. Yeah. Hey, you forget what's around you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no doubt. Don't you guys for uh, training camp? Don't you like stay in a hotel too, so you can't even go home, or is that an old thing? So. Uh, I would say because of COVID, it changed. With COVID, they had to put everybody the first year in like your own single rooms for travel, and they kind of were just like, that's too expensive. Most hotel, I mean, now you're renting a whole hotel instead of like, I think it was like year four, you got your own room, everything under that you were sharing. So it's kind of, yeah, since COVID, they've kind of, the rules have changed. So it's usually you get to stay at home now, which that's nice. Makes camp 50. 100 200 times better like <laughs> yeah it's sleeping in your own bed there's oh, yeah. nothing like it yeah yeah it's even though like that's it. about the only thing you're doing during camp literally you, you get home lay in bed yeah what up. do your guys hours look like when you're in camp like yeah so la- the last two years it's been i mean get to the if you're eating breakfast and stuff you get to the facility around 6 a- i mean if you have treatment it's like 5 a.m 5 30 a.m treatment starts and you don't get i mean you're not done until um, seven eight o'clock at holy least. shit yeah that's some serious days. And that would yeah. say, like, that's later in camp. I mean, yeah. there's days you're there 9 or 10. Yeah, if I was you're being, a younger I was guy. Being okay. Of, yeah, I was being, <laughs> yeah, fuck yeah, dude. Really? That, um, <clears throat> so, you guys, so you're new ish to Denver. Yeah, you're kind of new to Denver. You came here a couple years ago. What do you guys think of, like, the city? Like, especially now. So, obviously, this is a golf podcast. We don't really typically talk too much about golf, though. We usually fucking talk about <laughs> other sports. We bullshit about it. But everything. so, like, this cup run the Avs are going on right now, which is dope. But, like, what do you guys think of the city compared to you growing up in Tampa? You grew up in, what, California, mm-hmm. but have been to Philly, Calgary for a while. Yeah. Like, what is it? What is, what's the difference? What do you guys like about Denver? You want to say anything? Man, uh, I will say, you know, the first kind of the few days I was here, you know, we we went to what game was it? The first round? What, when the Avs were playing? Yeah, they played the Blues. Then we went to, like, game two at home. And, you know, just, I mean, one, the sports energy is great, you know, especially, you know, hockey-wise, you know, living in Calgary and Philly, huge hockey towns. Like, 100%. You know, I obviously don't know how the regular season is here. I would almost, you know, kind of maybe, you know, might hate a lot of, you know, Avs fans might hate it. I would assume it's a little bit like the King, you know, in L.A. Uh, 
fans, you know, if if you're not winning, you're not showing up. If you're winning games, will show up. You For know, sure. And, and Calgary and Philly, you know, they're they're there. That's every all night. they. Yeah. yeah it, it is. That's well. That's, that's all they have in Calgary. Yeah, Philly, Calgary they've got is. some. Uh, yeah, and, and Philly's just a pro sports, you know, city. Oh, and, for sure. And there isn't else much going on, on the East Coast. You know, Denver, you can uh, do a lot more things than go sit at a hockey game than a team that's not winning games. But no doubt, the energy around it now is, I mean, it's, it's wild. Like, just, you know, you can feel it. It's always there, and that's, I mean, that's what's exciting about it. I mean. Absolutely. He's been in Tampa, and I'm sure. I was going to say, so yeah. what do you? Yeah. how do you think it compares to Tampa? I mean, You're like, a Lightning fan, one thing but we I, won't talk about that. <laughs> no, like, one thing I would say is, like, the fan base out here, like, in general, like the last two years, we, we haven't, we obviously haven't made the playoffs and stuff. But it's like later in the season, you're like you're leaving the game, and there's still like the fan, the fan base is just crazy support. I mean, every fan base, when you're losing, they're gonna have their their things to say yeah. and things like that. But like the fans have been all, they're, they're so supportive, even when things aren't going well for us. Like you know what I mean? They show that support and just going to the Avs games, the Rockies games. It's like they have good turnouts. You know what I mean? I mean the Rockies aren't a oh, dude. MLB powerhouse, yeah. but they they have pretty good turnout. We just I just went to the game, or yeah, we both went to the game Sunday, and um, I mean there was pre- pretty good turnout. You know what I mean? So yeah, I mean that, absolutely. That, that's one thing that I've seen here is like the fan base is very strong. Well, and I will say the Broncos, I think in all of sports, probably have a top ten fan base. Yeah, like dedicated. Yeah. Like, even when we have bad years, like the last one or two years, um, there's maybe like 5,000 seats that aren't filled. Exactly. And there's, pla- like, you look in Cleveland, you look el- you look in a lot of different places, the stadium's half full, less mm-hmm. than half full. Like, you'll never see that here. We could go 1 in 15, and the stadium's still going to be three quarters of the way full at least. So Yeah, well, we go, so we go to an away game every year, at least mm-hmm. one. This year we're going to London, so that'll be fucking oh, yeah. sick. That'll be sick. Um, but, we every year we go like we've been going since 2012 or 13 and other than like i've been to kc a few times i mean obviously that's that's mostly kc fans but like last year in dallas (laughs) they're terrible (laughs) fucking the the fucking at&t stadium was half orange jerseys bro like the we the fan base travels so fucking well and like we were in Nashville. Um, what, that was when Aqib Talib fought Harry Douglas, yeah, and like it's sick. all Broncos fans. Like they're like especially like lesser teams or teams mm-hmm. with not a great fan base. Like the Broncos just take that shit over, and I'm stoked for like when we go to Wembley. Like I that shit's be gonna orange. be orange. Yeah, it's fucking yeah. When cool. we played um, the Chargers last year, like even for that trip, you know what I mean? That trip, like we came out of the tunnel, and like it was like more orange jerseys than chargers colors you know what i mean oh, like, yeah. although that stadium was so big i felt like it, it it's hard to fill that stadium up <laughs> yeah, like, no yeah. Joke. you know what i mean but yeah i mean time in time out fan base always shows up well and the cool thing like so this is i mean this is you know we've had some down years broncos wise but this is a broncos town exactly. and like i mean the fucking biggest cheers you get at avs nuggets and rockies games are when you guys are there and they fucking show you on the thing and it's like denver you know like fucking Dalton I, I, Reisner yeah, chugging Reisner a beer, yeah, yeah, he yeah. Got, and he, Coach Hackett, they went crazy. Yeah, they go Hackett, crazy yeah. for Hack. Like I remember ha- when Hackett came over here, it was like his first day, or like right after he got hired, and him and uh, Justin Outen were sitting, fucking. At they the Nuggets game, literally right? fucking showed him on the screen, dude. The place was louder than the whole game. Yeah, and, and same just, with the Az game when Wilson was there. Yeah, when it was a playoff game, dude, and it just. It like the loudest cheer that entire game. It went up twice as much, like yeah. just showing Russell Wilson absolutely insane but yeah like the city of Den- like it's look it's low key i feel like i feel like certain players like you can have a family here but there's also like a, a good city life in denver which is it, i think it's dope probably not yeah. as much city life like you got places like atlanta you got it, what was the nightlife like in philly was it a little more low key or was it pretty popping no i mean probably a mix you know it, it's an east coast city. everything's small you know it's all like small you know small bars small clubs uh but we also all, you know, because it's a little different dynamic. So in Philly, the facility and the stadium are in the city. And so a lot of the guys, if you were single, you know, you lived in downtown Philly. Yeah. There was no, like, exception. That's where you lived. Because guys with families lived in Jersey. And they drove 25 minutes in because that's where the suburbs are. And, like, Philly, I was showing him on the way here. It's just row homes. And, you know, it's it's a different – East Coast is a different way of living compared – you know, the streets can be – there's some blocks that are, you know, six feet, seven feet wide. Yeah. You know, they're built in the 17 – 60s yeah which like is it's insane a wild wild place and here you know we're in the suburbs you know we i think every guy on the team almost you know lives down in centennial area you know around yeah. that area because it's it's where our facility is you know it makes sense you know if you want to drive that 30 minutes to live in the city but it's also you know the, the few weekends i've been here i've been going out and having a good time in the city hell and yeah it's dude. been 
it, it's been you know fun you know, a lot of like you know a lot of breweries here a lot of rooftop <laughs> like bars to go to there's it, nothing better than a rooftop bar in the no summertime. i'm a Just, no i couldn't agree more yeah and this is you know the best place for it yeah, yeah great the know? weather oh. and everything dude yeah, yeah the views too the views yeah. absolutely yeah. you're not yeah, getting that's what that's cities. the only uh reason that i ever go to coors field is to get drunk and fucking look at the mountains like <laughs> the rockies the are mountains. terrible fucking that uh, what do you think of the uniform the like the mountain the driver's license looking uniform yeah that's funny. That dude, is what that actually, looked like. No, yeah, dude, that's that. 100% what it was. Yeah. and But they wouldn't admit that. So I think everybody was kind of like giving him shit for like, oh, just say it's supposed to look like the license plate. And yeah. I think, but I, I don't know, dude, other than the green, I didn't love the green, but I actually like the mountain. Like, I thought it was kind of cool looking overall, just the weird colors. Like, but I think yeah. you said it. We were like, why don't the mountaintops have snow on them? The, yeah. There's the mountaintops here have snow on them year round. You yeah. can't like argue that oh, so yeah the jersey i mean you should have had some you know snow covered yeah it, no it definitely got some fucking flack when it yeah. came out like people were like what the fuck is like this? we're not bad enough and then they gotta release those shit jerseys and <laughs> yeah i was in the one. shop uh looking at jerseys because I, I bought a trevor story jersey uh, i was there, yeah <laughs> we tried to talk you out of that bro yeah I tried. I, I mean, it was gonna be him or arenado i mean it yeah worked out either way but um i was looking at the shop and i'm like i, I wouldn't i can't spend, i wouldn't buy that like <laughs> The, like what is this what dude's I mean? name like is yeah. he gonna be on the squad in three years <laughs> yeah, like, exactly yeah dude that's the toughest thing buying a jersey is i mean it's nice to buy your favorite player but at the end of the day you're like are they gonna be around like i don't want this jersey to exactly because it may be an irrational thing for me but it bugs the shit out of me when i see somebody wearing a jersey of like a, a virtual like no name from like 15 years ago it's like either get <laughs> like just don't get a name on a jersey or or get a current jersey. Like, I'm not trying to shame people there, but, like, just don't wear their jersey. Like, yeah. we see that a lot of Avs games, Nuggets games, shit like that, and that just bugs me. So, like, with the Rockies, I wouldn't buy a jersey for, like, five or ten years yeah. until the full rebuild happens, other than Kyle Freeland. Yeah, Fre because he's Freeland's a Colorado, a Colorado kid, so. Yeah, you can wear that no matter what around here. Yeah. But. Um, so, speaking of jerseys, I personally think, and I've been fighting for this, so the Broncos went to Orange, I think, the first year Peyton was here. And it used to be the fucking white pants with the top blue top. What do you? What is your guys' preference? Because like I think last year in Dallas yeah. you wore like what all blue? That looks all fucking blue. Sick. Is no, fire. So in, in Dallas it was just regular. Oh, orange in Dallas and white. it was orange because uh, they flipped. The Chiefs it. game was all blue. Yeah, I think the blue jerseys are the best. By by, that's just my personal opinion. A hundred percent. I I play in a Madden league and I'm the Broncos <laughs> and I fucking every uh, I, when I'm at home I change the jersey to blue top blue. white pants. Yeah, I think it's the best looking jersey. Like the helmets are already dope. Like yeah. the, the yeah. color scheme's dope, but like i don't know i'm just not a big fan of the orange jerseys other than the fact it like stands out it's like so different than any other team but like yeah. i'm a big blue jersey guy i do like i do remember like growing up and and you like you guys had it the blue stripe that like went up the leg actually went from jersey to pant and match same color and went up i thought that like i vividly remember that as a kid like and like that was Terrell a Bronco Davis. game. Yeah, yeah. that's right you like can see that in your mind oh, all the time when you think yeah. about it yeah but like you were saying when a team because blue, a lot of teams have blue. Like, if you're wearing a blue jersey in Dallas, we, you know, no one knows if you're a you know, Cowboys fan or yeah. you're a Broncos fan. And so, like, the orange, I do like that. Like, when you go somewhere, it's like, oh, that dude's a Bronco fan. Like, that's true. It, it makes that, that stadium, wherever you go, like, stand, uh, there's the Bronco fans. Like, it, and that, so for that aspect of it, you know, I love it. And it's, it's probably, probably why they did, you know, it, it makes sense, you know, when they're showing, when you're playing away games, it shows a crowd. You can't hide orange jerseys. Yeah. You can exactly. hide blue, you can hide white. You, Orange, you're not hiding in any stadium. That makes sense. I actually like that. Oh, yeah. So, I always little, wear orange to away games. Well, because we, I mean, it's always it's been orange for the last however many years. And I even remember you're kind of full of shit because when it was <laughs> Navy, he was like, oh, dude, orange would look so sick. And no, then for I, like I two years, that. you and then you're like, oh, this is so sick. And then two years later, you're like, I miss the Navy. And it's like. Dude, you got to pick one. Well, yeah, I wanted to go to orange because, like, the blue, like, it's been since we were fucking born, basically, yeah. that we were blue. So I was like, oh, cool, switch it to orange. It's totally different. And now I'm like, fuck. I want to go with the Let's old school Bronco, like, the old school Bucking Horse logo. That logo is so fucking yeah, what, sick. Yeah, why no, like, is it, like, in... But you can now. No, you can. The they oh, they, they just added allowed the rule. That, right? So I know, because every team can have a second helmet, and you can have, like, a another alternate jersey. I don't know, because there's, like, rules to however many. You have to, like, put submit them, I guess. Like a, it, like now, this time of the year, you have to okay. see what you're going to wear. I don't know, it's all, you know. Yeah, it's so weird how, like, shit you know like that, that works out. Like, you why guys, can't like, you just wear a jersey? Can't, can't None wear of certain cleats and shit like that. Like, you, yeah. 
But uh, they, do you guys remember when the Broncos, like it was probably six or seven years ago, when we had Kyle Orton as our quarterback? We yeah, wore those fucking brown and yellow fucking jerseys. Yes. Oh, that was actually Oh, with the like, socks, the high. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah. that was Orton like was 10 like years 10 years ago. 10 years ago. Yeah. Years ago I'd, I'd put those like on that. in Madden every now and again just to mix it up. Oh, yeah. yeah those are, it those is are one fire. of those ones where like, they would look if you wore it every week. It'd be like, "Can we look like shit and piss?" But like, <laughs> <laughs> exactly. That, that yeah. Yeah, the yellow brown color scheme. But like, if you wear good. it once every, you know, four or five years, you're like, "Oh, those are dope, the sick throwback." Yeah. yeah, and I'm sure that's a jersey like you guys want to keep. It like, yeah, you have you're like, end. "Oh, this is dope." Like, I'll yeah. hang on to this. So, so do you guys like the uh, the number change too? That you can wear pretty much whatever you want now. Like, does it matter to you guys? I mean, you guys are what you wear. You're 49, yeah. for, right? And then 40. Yeah, I mean, I think it's pretty cool for some of the guys that, you know, want to go single. I mean, when you see, like, I don't know, different positions, like DNs wearing single digits, I mean, it's a good mix up. I yeah. mean, I will say before it happened, I was kind of like, just being this like a sports junkie, I was kind of like, eh, like, dude, it. he hated it. Yeah, because it, it kind of is like classic. the pros are, you know, what I mean? the pros yeah. is like, was like, yeah. you had your certain numbers you had to be, and then college was like, you can do whatever you want. Like, for sure. So, I don't know, it, I've been, but I mean, it, it's cool. Well, for dude, I, he's I he's like anymore. Rain Man with like sports numbers. I could ask him like anybody's number, yeah. and he'd know exactly what it was. So when they when everybody started changing, he, I think he had like a a panic attack, like he couldn't <laughs> handle it. He's like, I don't know what everybody's number is. Well, like Randy Gregory wearing five is gonna be fucking sick. Patrick yeah. Sertan wearing two, I think that's dope. But yeah. like the fucking just there's certain numbers that just like look like a corner should be like twenty to twenty nine. In my opinion, like a, cor- a yeah, corner yeah. wearing thirty looks like he's gonna get burnt to me. <laughs> you know, like yeah. in the third, like you're wearing thirty-seven, you're a corner. You're I do, yeah, yeah, and like you were saying, I think it is like being a professional. Like it's the difference of like yeah. you know, in college. Yeah, it's, it's like, almost like an honor to have that, yeah, n- yeah, like yeah, a yeah. number that's like yeah. I'm a linebacker in the NFL. It's like wearing a suit yeah. to work. You know, like you earned to wear that suit. Like, <laughs> yeah, rock it. Now you, you know. can just work from home. Now, yeah, just wear now whatever you, fucking number you want. Do you want to wear sweat still? Yeah, there you go. Um, so we want to tell you guys first real quick about DraftKings Sportsbook. So NBA Finals, real quick, picks. Celtics. Uh, I'm a now. big Celtics. Uh, yeah, I'm a big Celtics, Celtics in. Celtics in six. Celtics in six. I've like strictly become a Celtics Finals, like Celtics playoffs because of him. Like in the law. I mean, he is. I've been on. I've been on the Celtics since it's. You've been riding that train, Stephen A. Stranod. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, that's a good nickname. Oh, he Uh, all the hot takes. Oh yeah, oh yeah. 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 Every day in the locker room, (laughs) but like single-handedly has made me a yeah Celtics probably in five or six. Like hell yeah. I mean yeah, yeah, Justin Simmons. I'm. I have to get on him a little bit here, (laughs) but I mean he he has said the Celtics are going to lose every single series they've been in. He picked Brooklyn in I think five or six swept uh i mean he t- he took miami milwaukee yeah. i mean it's just I don't know. his pockets are getting a little light then huh uh no it's gonna take a long time for those, <laughs> yeah, right. those pockets yeah yeah those are some deep pockets yeah. well you guys can bet on the nba with DraftKings sportsbook which is an official sports betting partner of the nba new customers can get any uh get 150 dollars in free bets on any five dollar bet if you sign up and use that promo code dnvr you can also do same game parlays which are a fucking blast um Combining like Jason Tatum points, Steph Curry points, under on Clay Thompson threes because he's trash right now. Um, but you can download the DraftKings Sportsbook app, use that promo code DNVR, and make five dollar make a five dollar bet and get one hundred and fifty dollars in free bets instantly. Must be twenty one or older, Colorado only. New customers only. Minimum of five dollar deposit restrictions do apply. See DraftKings.com slash sportsbook for details. And if you have a gambling problem, call one eight hundred five two two forty seven hundred. All right, another awesome sponsor of this podcast is Manscaped, and I, I'm going to hand this to Alex over here because <laughs> we were talking about this earlier, and I was like, yeah, dude, Manscaped, and he's like, bro, I had my girl, and she was fucking, <laughs> so why don't you tell us a little bit about Manscaped, bro? Yeah, uh, no, what is it, no pricks, no. <laughs> I've got the, uh, uh, the talking you know, points right here. Yeah, uh, you know, it keeps you clean, it, you know. <laughs> Where at? Sip to... <laughs> Ever. Uh, <laughs> you won't, whether you or your significant other decides to uh, trim your ball hair, you will not get any nicks. And yeah, I mean, I live by it. It's, it's crazy. Yeah, like, dude. It's. I mean, you know, let a woman go down there. She's like, you know, <laughs> might, might lose a whole 
<laughs> might lose what you want and now it it keeps it clean it's nice yeah. <laughs> <laughs> love that I so love in the you can get the lawnmower 4.0 they have the whole uh the beard trimmer they've got the they've got like a foot spray they've got like a ball deodorant they've got everything so make sure you guys check that out especially since father's day is right around the corner uh you guys want to get that lawnmower 4.0 use our promo code bde um and at manscape.com you're getting 20 percent off any of those products so make sure you check that out Hell yeah. I don't know if I'd buy it for your dad, though, because your mom will be. Yeah. Mm. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> then you yeah, have to you think don't, about that You just that, that mental yeah. image. You're like, yeah. So just close. Maybe just get him the face one. <laughs> <laughs> just get him the face rub. I'm sure you could get some of the boys in the locker room some of that stuff, and that'd help a little bit. Maybe like the foot spray, things like that. I bet it, I bet it gets a little smelly in there. So, uh, yeah. That's it's a lot man. better than a college locker room, I can tell you that. Right, right, really? high, school, high school, even worse. Oh, yeah. yeah like, at least you have people doing your laundry, yeah. so that's got to keep it pretty clean. But, yeah. um, All right. Should we – well, let's ask – I want to ask one more football question. Do you have any more go football on, questions? Go for it. Um, so who do you guys think we're playing in the Super Bowl this year? <laughs> uh, Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Oh, okay. Yeah, That'd I'm be not it. just saying that because I'm a Tampa native, but I, I do think that they have a – very good team. Um, That'd be such a sigma. I mean, them signing Akeem so. Hicks, like I, people might not really un- understand. What happened there? Why was he not signed, bro? I couldn't find, figure that out. I mean, uh, he's a little bit older at this point, and uh, I feel like some teams are like maybe like, oh, we don't want to pay a guy who's not like he's not a predominant pass rusher. He's a, he's a run stuffing. T- not that he can't, you know what I mean? But yeah. I mean, for them to get him, like him and Vita Vea, like it, that's like you like aren't going to be running the ball through the A gaps and. Yeah. Probably not the B guy. Like you're gonna have to, you know what I mean? Like changes it's the big game. for their yeah, it changes the game for their defense and then obviously Tom Brady. I mean they'll be they'll okay. be very good offensively. I feel you, dude. What about Yeah, like, I mean I would say, love a revenge game against Philly. That'd be nice. I don't think, you know <laughs> you know, sad. I hope for they sure. do. It'd be fun. Um it's the Rams, you know, they're I mean that not, not much has changed. They got Bobby. Yeah. Who I think is a you know, huge addition, you know, to that defense. Like we were saying, you're not I mean he We'll see how he's in a new system. I'm excited to see how he's in a new system, but uh, yeah, I mean, they're they're still set up for success. I think it'll be them and uh, you know Tampa playing it out probably. Oh yeah. yeah, and when you get they got Aaron Donald. I mean, yeah, that's, yeah, he yeah, they changes. Just, the they game just gave completely. him a bag, bro. Like, yeah, they, they, they just gave him a quarterback deserves money. It. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He deserves it. So that's insane. Who's your guys' picks? Ooh, yeah, I can't really can't really go against Tampa Bay with Tom Brady there. You know, you just yeah. look like a fool if you pick against him. Dude, the Rams, like any L.A. franchise I just naturally don't like. No. Are you – did no. you grow up an L.A. fan? Or No. I I, I was actually going to say, like, the Packers also, if, you know, they figure out yeah. a little special teams and a little uh, – <laughs> A little help get around. Get some receivers, you know. I mean, Aaron, like, you know, I try to, like, bias trainer there. And so, like, you know, I you know know how you know good of a quarterback he, and like so you just like you know I hope he wins you know just seeing you know for sure and I think he deserves it like talent know, wise dude I think losing he might to be San the Fran most... thirteen to what ten and yeah, yeah. two, two block, block punts field, yeah. like yeah. and a, a block punt to block field goal like that's tough to put on him when he could have been in Tampa the next weekend like, oh absolutely you know, dude battling oh. out with Tom it would have been a whole different one hundred percent well that's a team and that's a team that I actually think as crazy as it sounds I think San Francisco they're just so nasty yeah. and that's why when we got yeah. fucking uh, K1 Williams and yeah. fucking DJ, DJ Jones, Jones yeah. bro like he's just like flew under the radar so my girl's a Niners fan and like she was like. She was yeah. sad to see them go, but obviously yeah. they came to her second favorite team, yeah. so she's like, "Fuck yeah!" But yeah, those guys Dude, like DJ Jones just looks like a propane tank with ears on him. Like, oh yeah, he's yeah. just fucking like stopping anything that comes in between him and the ball. Or yeah, he's like a pit bull. Uh, yeah, he, that's what. He, yeah, that's what it seems like, dude. Yeah. Hell yeah. yeah. And I will say one other thing about like the Bucks is like me and him talk about it too. Is like Leonard Fournette. Like people really like. Obviously, he got drafted very high coming out of college, but like. He's like I would say one of the best running backs in the NFL. That like, you think he's one of the most underrated, for sure. Yeah, I mean he obviously just got paid a decent amount, but like yeah, he's one of the guys that's he's one of the harder people that like I haven't played against him personally, but like watching, I'm yeah. a football junkie. Like he's one of the best running backs in the NFL, in my opinion. Yeah, dude, he got such a shit scenario when he got drafted to Jacksonville, and like even his rookie season, like he. He had nothing around him, and nobody could stop him still. And so I'm. it's yeah. cool to see him in, like, a cool situation like that where, I mean, he's got fucking Tom Brady. They just got weapons all over the place. Yeah. But, dude, I fucking – I just can't believe Brady I, – I mean, I can believe Brady's back. Like, you just kind of knew it was coming. But, like, yeah. that motherfucker, man, I just, like, I Is don't know. Is this his last year? I, 
fuck if they um, <laughs> i think never it, say i think he's going out on a dub like so i think if he lo- like you know if he doesn't win the super bowl the next three four i mean at some point the mother like, he's gonna have to fucking retire yeah but so i think you, you could see him going another three or four i i could yeah i think if he wins Dude, he though looks he's the exact out. same as he looked but five, does it six, take him three or four to win another one like that right hopefully not he never wins another one like yeah, I, I know. ideally but it's yeah. just tough to fucking stop that guy he's he's a menace all right, let's talk a little fucking golf. So I <laughs> this, this is a is, golf podcast. This is kind of yeah. We just yeah. Love let's talk some so golf. fucking much. So all right, so <laughs> Garbs, you fucking golf a lot. I'm fucking jealous. Like I'm always like looking. Yeah, at he's always posting. You guys were at Saddle daily. Rock. You guys were at. Well, you come out to Spring Valley. You guys were. Have you been down to Bear Dance yet? Yeah, we just Bear went Dance there a is sick. Of, yeah. Um, there's quite a few like out towards the facility. I mean, have you guys played City Park yet? No. Right here in... De- Dude, it's like two blocks from the bar here. Yeah. So sick. And the, really? the views of downtown, unreal and everything. So much fun. Yeah, you it's a great to- fucking track. It's just hard to get on. I mean, yeah. you, get, you might have to like... Some talk. of the like top of the line courses, I'm like, I want to wait until I become like an elite. Not an elite. You know what I mean? Like a really good golfer to like go play it. Like, For sure. Top. But we've played some really good ones. Uh, I mean, especially this OTAs, like some of the guys. We, we've been trying to get Alex out there. He's going <laughs> to... He when we go back in the Coming. summer, he's gonna yeah he's gonna get his bring get his clubs out. Okay, but I mean Josie, Sam Martin, um, B Max been gone, but he's he's obviously a big golfer. Um, J, J Sims, Cortland, uh, I mean, dude, we see Court out of Spring Valley quite a bit. Yeah, we've yeah. all been playing a lot um, during OTAs and. It's, it's just, it's so fun going out there with them and playing. Hell yeah. Did you guys, when did you start playing golf? Did you start like when you're older or did you start younger and then just kind of keep, keep going with it? Yeah, I started, I actually started when I was up in Calgary. A no bunch shit. of guys wanted to play kind of the same situation here and they're like, let's go play. And so I went to some place and the lady was like, here, we have these rental clubs and those are the clubs I still have. And they're like, <laughs> oh, they're terrible. But just you know, just regular shafts. I think they're like too short. They're, you know, it's yeah. They it, probably it, don't know. fit you very well. Oh yeah, it's it's terrible. And so that's why <laughs> you know they've been fighting for me. And like once I go to Cal, I'm this weekend. I am going to get fully fitted. Oh okay. And I will have clubs. Okay. In the next month, hopefully. Hell yeah. Well, are you gonna push them towards a certain brand? I know you're a big Bryson fan, which we can get into here in a bit. Because <laughs> no, I am. But I with you so no. That. I have the Sims. I have the Sim twos. Okay. Whatever. Yeah. Um. Uh, it's like I got all Sims, um, yeah. but I mean, I'm I'm not good enough to like know what's really legit and what I for th- sure. You know what I mean? It I'm almost still... comes down to like brand loyalty, like what you yeah. think looks cool, mm-hmm. or you know, oh, yeah. if you know somebody that plays that equipment, you're like, oh yeah, I'll play that stuff. But yeah, yeah. I will say with how hard I swing, I probably should be playing like Cobra. If I don't know if they actually have like some. Get you in those D D Shambo single. Uh, hey, he single always leg. still like slid that back in. Like, yeah, hey, I do. Have, but, I, do know, have, I do. I, like I just, Cobra. I just, swing, <laughs> I just hit it so hard, bro. I should probably be swinging some. When stiffer. I read my numbers, I actually they're the exact same. <laughs> <laughs> Me and D no, you put them side by side. You can't. Even I tell use the, the D Shambo jumbo grips on my clubs. I okay, will say I do that. And my dad actually, he's tried probably every club and every brand in a span of three years. He's literally like. He just called me the other day. He's like, "Yeah, I just just left the PGA shop. You know what? I didn't didn't plan on it when I went in there, but bought the stealth. Like he's like, <laughs> <laughs> he's like bought the stealth. He's like, dude, so golf's excited. a fucking crazy addiction. Oh, yeah. man. But that that is the thing you see a lot of people do is like they'd rather change their equipment than actually work on their game. So oh, that's, yeah, that's stupid. That's a pretty stand. <laughs> Who does that? A fuck, yeah. fucking That's my thing. Is like I'm keeping these clubs Wasted until time. I become like <laughs> legitimate, and then I'm going to try and like get like a legit set where I like take care of them completely and all that. For stuff. sure. Um, so, kind of a two part question for you guys. But what's your favorite course? So you haven't played in Colorado yet. No. Okay. So what's your favorite course you've ever played? Oh man, I mean, just like most beautiful, like oh Lake Sherwood Par Three. Okay, out in, yeah, California. in California. I haven't played Lake Sherwood's actual. That's where Tiger used to always hold his events. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I haven't played the the main course. That's, you know, <laughs> once again, like he's saying, I want to, you know, be able to hit the ball straight before I play For there. sure. But, yeah, their little part three. I mean. Oh, I bet it's sick. Oh, it's beautiful. It's got, like, the whole back nine is, like, classic part three holes. And oh, okay. So it's sick. Hell, yeah. That's dope. Yeah. What about you, Justin? I would say 
so this um, off season, me and a bunch of the guys went to Bears Best in Vegas. Oh yeah, and I mean that was pretty sick. Like some of the views, like it's it was really cool. I'd say that's one of them for sure. Okay, I mean Bear Dance, honestly, you I just like played Bear a couple Dance? Weeks ago and that was pretty sick. Yeah. yeah, dude, the views from Bear Dance are sick. Like yeah. Oh, and Pradera, we Pradera played, is pretty cool. Yeah, I, that I think it's like the seventeenth. Yeah, uh, where you're like on the mountain, basically hitting off the mountain or something. The like that. The par five where yeah. you're like on, yeah. at the very top. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's the only nice. thing with that course is it's a little like Mickey Mouse. Like some of the greens are crazy where you've got like one tier here and then you go like thirty feet up and then there's another tier. Yeah, like a few of those things I don't like, but that's a really good course. Like, do you have any guys that are members out there? Any teammates? Uh, I, I I don't know if Court is or not. But okay. Um, couple, yeah, some of the guys might might be out there. Because uh, Bo- Champ and Boss Bailey, when we were little, we played baseball at the baseball field right there in the Pradera, and they both lived in there. Okay. And I, I played baseball with their kids when like this was like 15 years ago, but yeah. it was dope. Like Champ and Boss would show up to our baseball practice and throw the ball with us and shit. And I'm like, yeah, this is insane. So, uh, but yeah, Pradera is pretty cool. Um, was that, would you say bear dance is your favorite in Colorado though? Other than spring Valley, of course. Yeah. yeah the Valley that's, Valley Valley that's, course. that's top. One. That's, that's um, the home course. I'm trying to think I, I've played a bunch lately, but like, yeah, I'd say bear dance. I mean, so far try, there was one other one, I think. Well, you guys I, played red Hawk, right? What oh, I actually like red Hawk. A you lot. like red yeah. Hawk? Yeah, for some reason I was able to keep the ball in play a lot there. I was gonna so say you I, like those wide fairways. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You're like, oh, dude, I'm fucking coming back it's here. Like, where have I played good? Uh, yeah, exactly. yeah. Well, we talk about that on the pot. Like when you like you could play the most beautiful course and you have the fucking worst day, yeah. and you're like, I fucking hate this place. Yeah, this place yeah. is yeah, garbage like, can. Yeah. yeah, but then you you can go to a dog track and play your best round of your life. You're like, I fucking liked it. You're like, I don't know what it is, but I like this place. It's like, well, you played good. Like that's. Yeah pretty much dictates how you, what you think of a golf course. It's pretty easy to enjoy four hours if you're playing well. If you're playing shitty, you don't care how beautiful it is. You're like, this place sucks. 100%. Um, well, so with you guys being, obviously, NFL athletes, what do you think that – is there any comparisons – or not comparisons, but, like, similarities to golf and football? Like, mentally, anything like that? Or are they just two totally separate things? I, I will say, like, I do think they're, like, very different in that – Football, like you're always like, it's like very like intense. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like very, you're like, oh, I don't know, you're just fucking always, pumped up. Yeah. And, just, and with golf, you want to be like as like relaxed football, as possible. Yeah. Football, you're almost like wiry. You know what I mean? Like, like, like you know <laughs> yeah. what I mean? Oh, for sure. Um, but like with golf, it's like I feel like to play 18 holes, like. I, I haven't done it yet. But like to play like eighteen good holes, I feel like you got to be like dialed in, relaxed, like focused yeah. for eighteen holes, and it's honestly hard to stay focused for eighteen. It holes. It takes a lot of mental discipline. Yeah, it really does. Yeah, I would say like on that, like they're so separate to where like you have to be relaxed and all that stuff. But like the focus that you have to have for like the sixty minutes of focus in football, it's like the same carryover yeah. to now four maybe five hours. With your buddies, like, you know, we're not playing pro golf, so it's like, you know, with your buddies, probably drinking, like, and then to have a game, you know, around like that where you're on, like, you know, eight or nine, like, oh, shit, you know, I might figure this out this time, you know. Yeah. Is, it's got to be that, fo- like, because for us, like, focus in football, it's easy. It's easy to, you know, lock in out. We got, you know, two-hour practice, whatever, whatever, you know. Yeah. But when you go out there, it kind of, you, you know, you'll lose it for two seconds, and now you're, you know three Make over it, yeah, like, yeah exactly. and so yeah to keep that the whole time i bet it, it's got to be that like same kind of like you're in it for you're sure ready. yeah there's obviously no physical similarities like <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you're not getting the shit beat out of you on the golf course so but yeah mentally i think i feel like well and just like any pro athlete like you got to be locked in but golf it can take five mm-hmm. six hours and you see some dudes out on tour and i have no idea how because i'm just more of a laid-back golfer like i like to bullshit and have fun and then yeah. about 10 or 15 seconds before my shot i like to focus but there's some guys where they like won't talk to you won't do they're just like in the zone i'm like mm-hmm. i need to take drugs to do that like i think i need adderall or fucking something because they might. i can't I've, <laughs> i haven't gone to the doctor yet but i probably need a prescription um, but yeah, it's just the, the focusing aspect I feel like has got to be at least good. Like when you're in the off season or whatever, playing golf, like to kind of get, and being athletes, it's just like that competitive nature comes out and you're like, I want to be good at this, but yeah. And I think that's like the competitive side, like makes it like, I don't know about you guys, but when I like play, 
I got to be playing for something. Like whether oh, it's lunch dude. after, dinner after, like a little side money. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> you got to, it just, it makes you focus a little more. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, gives you playing that, for fun is not any fucking fun. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> got to yeah. have a little bit of skin in the game exactly. here. Buying drinks. Nobody fucking likes that. Yeah. But <laughs> um, so who's the, who's the worst golfer on the team? that thinks he's nice like you know like the, somebody that goes out there and is like oh like fucking takes it all serious but then is actually bought all the ge- <laughs> oh! <laughs> no 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 i'm decent i'm decent enough to to not to not get that label yeah no but... one's ever yeah with the amount of shit he talks about sports if he was bad i would know he's like, got, it would yeah, be very exactly. like no justin sucks at golfing <laughs> like so that doesn't happen so. okay i was i don't know i mean like you're gonna have to say a name, bro. Just the, the, for that label exactly, though. Yeah. I, it's not. It's tough. Like, well, just who's the worst and knows their shit, but still like plays on a consistent basis. I mean, I don't want to. Like, this is my guy. <laughs> <laughs> this is my guy here. But like, Jay Sims knows he's not like he's, he's not, not that. He, yeah, but I mean, he goes out there and does his thing, and has, we have a blast with him. You know? Well, what yeah, I mean? dude. As long as you're having a good time, but like, you try to take a little bit of his money then on the course. Yeah, I mean, we play we play for a little, you know, little, little side Do you have to give him shots, or you guys just straight up? So what we've done, like, lately is we try to make it, like, even team. So, like, what we're trying to do in the next couple of days is have me and Josie versus, like, him and Court. Because I tell you what, like, the last five times we've played, Court's been, like, legit. Like, we, the first time we played, like, Court was, like, shaky up and down. And then the last five times, I'm like... We were playing, and me and Josie are like, D- did he go get less in? Like, what, like, what change? He's <laughs> what been, like, fuck? dialed in, like, seriously. So we're trying to get that for later this weekend or something. Uh, me and Josie versus Court and uh, Justin. Hell, yeah. That sounds dope. Yeah. Yeah. So, the like, do you guys, wh- when you get to go play golf, like, you probably don't do it during the season, but, like, during the summer, when you get to go play golf, do you, like, try to get, like, the biggest group you can? Do you guys, like, all plan that shit out, or is it just, like, a, a, a few? Like, is there how many guys play? Like, is there a fair amount of them? Yeah, I would say, like, what we've, we've done is we try to keep it, like, I mean, once you get more than four, it's like, you know what I mean? You got to right. kind of, like, two different groups. But I think one time we did, like, two foursomes, you know what I mean? It kind of did, like, best ball and just played, like, had fun that way and stuff, try to make teams even. And then, well, I think we were talking about it this week, trying to get, like, the best players. So, like, Rippin is a really good player. Um, McManus and Sam Martin, they're, they're, like, probably the three best players on the team. Um, trying to get them to like have have a draft and like go out and play and stuff like that. So we're trying to put that together. That'd be sick, dude. I I've heard McManus is obviously a stick. Being a kicker, you have more time and <laughs> kickers like, and quarterbacks, dude. It's like yeah, it's like being a pitcher in the MLB kind of thing. Uh, like, yeah, yeah. yeah that, I mean, well, and actually, the crazy thing about like the physics of kicking a, a football, actually, like the way you curve it and the way you work it, makes sense in golf. Like, the way that yeah. McManus attacks, like, the ball mentally and, like, the way he's learned how to kick it can actually translate over, which is kind of insane. But I, I kind of think that that gives probably him a little bit of an advantage there, yeah. like, knowing how to – how. I mean, not that he can necessarily do it every time, but he's like, okay, like, this is how this works yeah. versus everybody else, you know, golf's a – completely fucking foreign thing to them so we're just yeah. out there trying to crush the fucking ball <laughs> <laughs> just hit it as hard as you can yeah that's always a blast too i i don't hit it that far but he hits it a fucking long way so i usually know where my ball's going he doesn't yeah mine is a little more off so <laughs> yeah. but yeah it, it, the best part is about dent like playing here like it's like we talked about a little bit earlier, it's so much different. Like when you when you start playing more yeah, here, you'll dude. That's it's, all they talk about. Like you feel like you're just a you're a boss out there. Like yeah, yeah you know I've got like a three twenty five just casual average drive. Like what? Yeah, yeah. and like yeah. that whole garbs was talking about at Pradera. Literally, you can hit a four hundred and twenty yard drive and not hit it that good because it's fucking straight down a hill. Oh yeah. yeah, Josie hit one. I got to be one of the longest drives ever there like when we were playing just right down the middle and just rolled 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 it was crazy uh, it's crazy on par fives out here like if you have a good tee shot like you're like birdieing like for sure you've got like a short like, iron in or something yeah, yeah you've got not like, me not. of course but like if you're like <laughs> decent at golf like consistently with the irons in the short game he's with a putter are. already he's already on the green oh yeah 100 percent. he's just driver right on the green well um, that's like red hawk 18 it's a par five but it's literally driver fucking wedge yeah like if you hit it right in front of the water like mm-hmm. it's a fucking 150 yards in and you're like all right and you're yeah, like the, yeah you're like, you're like looking at the scorecard you're yeah. like what the fuck is this yeah. a par five yeah it feels like a medium length par four and ends up being a par five but 
Have you guys been? Well, so you haven't been yet, but I know the Broncos do um, some stuff at the Sanctuary. Have you ever heard of the, the golf course called the Sanctuary? Yeah. So one of our Bill Kolar, who he, our former D line coach, he um, he's in our in a lot of our meetings a lot of the time, and he was telling us about Sanctuary the other day. So we've been in contact with like Dude, their people, and we're it, trying to. Get it's out unreal. There. Like if you can get Just, out there, take take the opportunity because yeah. so it's owned by the owner of remax that started remax he's worth oh, like shit. 350 400 million dollars so yeah. he's got a, a few yeah. dollars to throw around so he built this course um specifically for him and his wife like it's unless there's a charity event he they only do charity events no public play no members oh really no nothing just him and his wife and then charity events so the place is fucking unbelievable just immaculate like that's the view. so sick yeah exactly he just built his own personal golf course basically whenever he gets um, pissed oh i'm sure he does <laughs> this stupid fucking hole throws his clubs in the pond <laughs> who like, did this fucking yeah, redesign blame this it on right anybody. now yeah what fucking this, idiot did this, this fucking tree up <laughs> yeah well somebody's getting fired right here. <laughs> yeah. yeah we're playing in a charity event there in like two weeks and it's ten thousand dollars a foursome yeah. Stop. Yeah. Yeah. Like we're just, not paying for it. Like we got some no, members okay. at our course that are going to pay. The, the guy, dude, it's full. Cool. Like 140 Broncos? people go and do. It's well, fucking what, nuts. what ends up happening with a lot of those is big corporate companies will come yeah. in and buy four foursomes, and it's a 250 thousand dollar write off or what? It's like fucking insane. Oh like just God. to play golf. Yeah. So, but yeah, if you guys ever get the chance, get out there. It's badass. So. <coughs> Um, so let's see what, what, uh, should we go a couple more football questions before you let him get out yeah, of here? Yeah, I think it, go for it. I know you fucking got plenty of them. Um, oh, what are some good fucking football questions? I'm almost, uh, I would say I'm always most curious about like, uh, what, what is like something day to day that nobody really realizes that makes your job like hard? Cause obviously playing the NFL is like the coolest fucking job in the world, right? Or top five, it's right up there. Yeah. But there's got to be something that like not everybody knows about where you're like this. It's a gr like obviously it's a grind, but is there anything specific that you guys like day to day notice? I mean, for pro sports wise, so uh, you know if you take all the you know, whatever five major sports, we're the only ones that do meetings like okay. that have like hours of endless meetings. So I would say that's the kind of drag on football we do. You know, we play one game a week. And this whole time right now, we're meeting and practicing, and then we, in camp, it's, you know, we're there from, like we said, 7 a.m. to 10 p.m. I would say 10 of those hours, roughly, is probably meetings. Like, you're, you know, Damn. besides the two-hour practice and the hour walkthrough, the rest of it is, you know, 40, 30 to 45 minutes for eating, and the rest is meetings. And so I would say that's the, you know, the biggest difference, and I didn't even learn that, so I was playing up in Canada in Calgary, and the Flames actually own the Stampeders, and they asked for like more video equipment for games and the flames were like the fuck you need to film more shit for like <laughs> there's no way why are you watching film and they're like no this is you know and so the budget for you know film you know in the cfl you know 100k to, to ask the flames for that was like that's ridiculous so i do know like major sport wise that would be like the downfall of football is just how many more how much more meetings we have than everybody else that makes sense. Well, and so do you, I don't know if you guys have ever watched any of the hard knocks, but is that, if you have, is that like, is that like played up at all? Or is that like, do they play it up for the camera? Like, I know some players do specifically, yeah. but like the meeting shit, like, I think the cool, I think the coolest thing about the NFL is like, you don't get to see like a lot of that shit. Mm -hmm. So when that gets released, like everybody like jumps on it because you get to see like inside the meeting rooms yeah. and shit like that, because there's so many, like there's so many things you guys know that your coaches have said or players have said or owners or whatever mm -hmm. that you would never fucking tell anyone, yeah. you know, yeah. other than maybe like your closest family or yeah. you talk to each other about it. But like, there's so much, uh, like an not anima, what's the word I'm looking for? Like just out there that people don't know that yeah. shit's like said so is that like played up do you think like when they go on hard knocks they're like okay we can only allow this this and this to be actually viewed by the people or is that pretty real no i'd say it's pretty yeah. real for the most part i mean the one thing they're i heard they're like trying to fix like teams don't want it with hard knocks is like teams were actually going back and watching hard knocks and using the snap counts and stuff like oh you, that's bullshit yeah well, they, no, well like you smart. yeah it's smart well, i mean yeah. competitive it's advantage smart. yeah it's smart but like it just sucks that you can't like expose you can't expose any of that so how yeah, do they control like, that they I don't, won't yeah like <laughs> I think when you see like some of the jokes and stuff in the meeting rooms, like that's real. Cause like, I mean, when you're in the meeting room for 
eight hours a day. Like, yeah. there's got to be a joke or two crack because it's otherwise it's just you're literally watching film, talking to your coach, answering questions. You know what I mean? Stuff like that. And that's one like he was saying the the main thing about football that I think people don't understand. Like, if someone's gonna make a joke to you about your job and football, they're gonna be like, oh, you just show up and practice. Like, no, you got meetings for hours on end, and then at the pro level, like to take care of your body, to do like the day in day out stuff that's another couple hours a day just on your body alone. You know what I mean? So it's like there's so many different things that go into it. Yeah. Absolutely. So with the uh, the new ownership coming in, obviously that's in, like, does that have an, like not an effect on you guys, but like on the team, does anybody like talk about it? Does it matter to you guys? Or is it just kind of like, yeah, we got our coaches, we got our, we got our specific position coaches. It is what it is. I think it is what it is. I mean, it's cool. I mean, if you get an owner that, We'll give you a bunch of free shit. Obviously, you're down for it. But like, you get a limited like, Walmart like gift card now. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. You know, <laughs> is that like a, is it official that it's gonna be him? Uh, I think he's in like the. No, it, it's like the top bid. So yeah, like, he's at four and a half billion or whatever. But I got that cash. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, someone dude. can outbid him. Yeah, um, I got that cash on the side if we want. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Here's my thing: when someone like, <laughs> what can we so pull together? When they right buy now? a team. Like, <laughs> obviously, it might just be. I mean, he's probably got enough money to do it. I don't know, but like. Are they literally paying outright cash, or do you like finance that? That I, that is something. I think I mean, it. I think it just. I think this would be a pretty much outright cash thing because he's got so much fucking money. Like if it's a if it's like an ownership group, and I've heard that they like even Rob Walton has talked to Peyton Manning about being part of it. Mm -hmm. But I'm sure if it like if it's more smaller. Well, when I say like people that are worth. 10 million 20 million 30 million where you got to put 4.5 bill together i would m imagine that would be like a finance thing but i think the dopest yeah. part about walton is he's so fucking rich like he's playing like a new stadium there's like yeah. you know there's all this shit that could be in the works for the broncos in the future it'd be fucking awesome because it's different like when Mad the people say magic johnson owns a team like he's not he he doesn't have five billion dollars into the dodgers it, organization. yeah exactly like he, you know he might you know i mean he's got millions of dollars in the dodgers organization but yeah i would say he's probably like a finance year or something or yeah they, for big sure word they got for it but yeah like it would be yeah this dude i think is coming in like but uh, you know so we might be knocking Just walking around in like cotton walmart tees you know like, <laughs> whatever <laughs> new. Your, everyone your else new is wearing Broncos nike gear leggings for the years. we're gonna like have walmart like walmart the, the walmart you guys got fucking See, hanes the walmart brand the pants. starter yeah, yeah, yeah you're like, like doing warm-ups in the starter shit we're gonna all look like an 1985 team like <laughs> starter gloves like that stick would be them, kind but, of fire you know, I great like value that. great value yeah great, yeah, <laughs> yeah great value yeah okay um here's another one who's the funniest dude in the room like who keeps a light in the locker room if you had to pick one Oh man, the whole locker room. That's I mean, is there one dude in particular, or is it, is it like a group, or is it? Yeah, I mean, yeah, they, you got like Jay Sims is a good. Yeah, uh, K Jack, they're all they're funny dudes. You okay. know it's I mean? more like the banter. Well, I would say like the back I think, and forth. Yeah, yeah the everyone sports talk yeah. every day. Is the like, sports talks more like the. Like the Celtics win game one, I come in laughing at everybody on the team. <laughs> then two days later, everyone's laughing at me. I, okay. I walk in to get breakfast, I'm getting laughed at because they got blown out. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? Oh, for that's, sure. That's how it is every day. Hell yeah. Like I would say yeah. in camp, I mean, I haven't been here, you know, so I don't you know, know. But I like when camp starts, you'll see the guys that like really start. When We're only there right now for five, six hours a day. And it's, yeah. you know, three, four days a week. So it's not, I think like the sports talk still, you know, like anything else, a bunch of dudes, like that still overpowers everything else going on. Like. For sure. And we don't run out of sports talk yet. Right. More or less. like Until just baseball's on and you're like looking at each other like, what the and fuck? it's August. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's some terrible shit. Also, I, do you guys know like how much does an owner make a year off of like it? Like how long will it take the owners to get their $4.5 billion? Dude, back? I don't. I, do you know? You said never? They said the dude. It again, then they would make it back less but really? didn't the Rams owner, they with the Super Bowl and the Rams winning and the like bonuses and stuff, they said he made like a good chunk back. Back for like I guess moving the team to LA I guess maybe not oh yeah what he owns them for but moving back to LA costing you know, obviously a couple billion dollars and whatever but yeah. I guess he he had a, at least made a billion dollars yeah hosting oh, well, well he owns that stadium too so hosting the Super I think that was more than yeah hosting yeah, than, the, yeah. dude it just yeah it's it's, it's even like hard to wrap your head around that kind of money and and just, like I was even talking to Spencer the, yesterday and I was like. Dude, so the Broncos are going to sell for four and a half, five billion dollars, massive. Twitter, a thing that we're on every day, which is just a phone app, is going to sell for ten times that, <laughs> which is fucking insanity. Like it's hard to wrap your head around that, but like some of that money just, you, it's too too yeah. much. Yeah. Like it's just fucking nuts. 
Um, so I, you played in the CFL. Yeah. What 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 do you think the difference is there? Like, is oh. it is it casual up there? Like, is it dope or? Do you, I loved it. I okay. I think everyone like I loved it. I mean, you're you know obviously now I'm making the same money, so you know, yeah. I guess it's different. But how? So what I learned obviously going up there that people don't know is Americans going up there. It's part time employees, so it's like anything. If you get a visa to go somewhere, so you were only allowed to work five hours a day for oh. a twenty hour work week. So they couldn't couldn't do what we do here where we have, you know, practices, you know, Monday to, through Friday where we were there from, you know, seven to seven on a you know day one during a week up there. It, it, you know, it's nine to one no matter what. So that's fire. It, it was fun, though. I'll and it, that it starts there. in June. So in Calgary, I mean, we were at I mean, you're sitting at a patio, you know, looking at the you know, it, I would say I think a lot of people call like Denver, like, you know, South Calgary, you know, people from Canada, they yeah. you know, love Den- Denver's like. Yeah, it, almost identical. It's right off the Rockies, just like this. You know, Banff and Kananaskis and all that's right there. It's the same thing as here, and and so you know it. It's that every day we would go do that. You know, just you got off work at one o'clock. So what do you do? You know, what do you do when it's go eighty degrees and it's perfect rooftop. in June? Like you go drink beers on a rooftop. So <laughs> yeah, it, you know, I it's fun and also you know like I said the money whole thing. You know, teams aren't selling for five billion dollars. It's we have full cafeteria staffs here. You have full everything. Uh, up there, we had pizza on day one. Uh, <laughs> They're day like, pizza two, day. Day two, we didn't have anything. And day three, we did a player's barbecue. And every guy that was hurt. So the guys that were hurt. So rookies, every or each position group, because there was eight or 21 weeks. We had three bye weeks with 18 games. Damn. Every every year every week was a different position group would pay so everyone would chip in like twenty bucks and the coaches would go buy stuff to barbecue and the injured guys would barbecue <laughs> and that's what that was that's our food and then breakfast wild. was you know they had waffles and like t- they had waffles and bread to make like toast and that was it like if you wanted something else and then I know one year we like all pitched in like fifteen bucks every two weeks to have like a catered breakfast where you get like a breakfast burrito two times out of the three days in a week. So it, yeah, I mean it's, it's fucking burrito day. Let's yeah, go. And it, like you would get hyped about it, but it you know it's it's definitely a different league. But that's I, fire, dude. I think yeah, it sounds sick. like a blast. It's fun. Oh yeah. yeah, and like teams. So it's kind of a lot. You know, it's Canadian, so it's a lot. You know, it's kind of got the hockey, you know, soccer like kind of mixed to it. You know, the teams in the East and the CFL are on the same sideline because they play on like on the soccer fields the the fields so the it's set up to have one sideline so that's wild you're on the same sideline when teams travel up there because it's expensive to travel and charter flights so the east teams because they're all so close together they don't charter planes so they they fly commercially to so they would say if you're in toronto they'd fly to calgary we'd play but they would also stay the night so then you'd all go out together Oh, and okay. so both teams, so it was kind of like the hockey, rugby, you know, that kind of mix of, you know, t- people weren't separated. And there's only nine teams, and you play everybody three times. So now it's That's like, fire. you know, you're traveling, you're partying together. It, 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 it's kind of cool. You get to know everybody. It's a totally different. A lot you know, more of a camaraderie oh, type yeah. thing than yeah, the Yeah, it's a league. It's kind of like, you know, the league. You have to work together to continue to, you know, have leagues like that. Yeah. And the NFL, you know, you kind of don't. Guys can kind of. <laughs> and it's just different, you know, when you have guys making tens and 20s and 30s and millions of dollars. And the difference in the CFL, the highest paid players, 500000 and the, you know, minimums just under a hundred. Okay. So no one, you know, you're not having multi I guess you could have multimillionaires, but you're not really. Yeah. And so everyone, you know, everyone's kind of living that same same lifestyle. Yeah. I mean, but you're still playing football for a living. Oh so yeah, it you're was like, the best. This is I, awesome. I everyone I should watch a CFL game. It's fun. Special teams matter. It's three downs. It's fun. It's a it's a fun game to watch. Fuck yeah. So last question before we get out of here for both of you guys. What is your favorite? So it can be kind of a two parter. What's your favorite like city to travel to NFL wise? And then, like, what is your what's the, like maybe the most like crazy atmosphere? Just going into a, running out onto a field, like, what's the craziest stadium you've you've been at? Um, I mean, last year was my first year, so I would say, I mean, for me, it was even though the stadium and the fans weren't crazy, Jacksonville, but like I was able to have so much uh, family and friends at the game that it was really cool. Um, so I'd say that was that was kind of the place last year, just the way that was pretty cool. And then, I mean. I mean, the first that game against New York was it was my first career start. I mean, coming out of the tunnel at Mile High was honestly like pretty overwhelming. So I'd say, I mean, I'd yeah, say that shit's High, fucking honestly. crazy. Yeah. That, that I mean, I, I'm stoked for you to see it and like yeah. and be in it because it's fucking nuts. We came dude. here last year. 
Oh, I remember. That. Well, I blacked out oh, that game. But we came here last year. I remember that, that shit, game. Yeah, I but was as not a, a fan. wearing orange I agree, this time. I agree. Yeah, but it's fucking nuts. So yeah, what about like I'm excited like for you. Well, you've probably seen it, but Seattle like game one. Yeah, even though Seattle's I mean, cool. That's I, I think fun. it'll be a different kind of vibe. Like no Russell. I think. Yeah. It'll what do be you guys like, think? You guys think does Russ get booed or does he get like? I think they gotta have like a tribute for him and stuff. Right? Well, dude, I don't. In my do opinion, you know? it almost feels. It feels like. More of the fans of Seattle are on like Russell's side versus like Carol's yeah. side, yeah. Because I think that's it seems like that's where they're a little divided. So I think they, so they're cheering. I think that you think they're gonna boo? Yeah, because the organization has sold them that like Russ forced his way out. I don't know, dude, I'm but like, they, but it's also Seattle. It's Seattle. Sure. They're like they're like American Canadians. They're nice people. Yeah, you know, they're not. They don't have that bu- like. Yeah, they don't. Also probably the best player in their franchise history. That's has true. to be right. There's yeah, no. that's true. Yeah, I think, I, dude, I think it might be a mixed bag, like a little bit of cheering, a little bit of booing. But, I mean, I could say I've never really been through that as a fan, so I don't really know. Like having yeah. a, a star pick. I, I will say I'm like when Nolan Arenado left the Rockies, even though it wasn't necessarily his fault, like I still fucking hate the guy now. Like, <laughs> so I'm not I'm like that bitter fan. Yeah. So you know? how do you feel about Trevor Story then? Yeah, if Trevor Story comes back, Trevor you Story wasn't as big of a deal as Nolan. Like I think more people understood where story was coming from um but story story is obviously raking out in boston so they did offer a story right contract yeah they they offered they offered him money i mean yeah it just comes down to winning with the rockies so it's kind of a horrible comparison because we know what their intentions are pretty much year in year out (laughs) um but so what are your guys favorite uh like just nightlife cities to travel to then like just going out with your your buddies like I mean, Atlanta's pretty cool. I've been to Atlanta. I've heard Atlanta is like one of the low key. It's not New York. It's not Miami. It's not LA. But I heard it's like badass. Yeah, I went there in college one time, my senior year, or before my senior year of college, uh, with some of the guys for uh, UFC 236. Um, and that, it was a pretty sick time. So, okay. I mean, Atlanta's pretty cool. Um, I'm trying to think. Heard they have I mean, really Vegas good chicken wings. Always, Vegas oh, is yeah. always a top. Mean, Vegas it's is, Vegas. I Vegas. mean, that's Vegas. Yeah, yeah, Vegas is tough to top. I know. I like. I haven't been to Nashville, and this is like as and I'm t- I, like as a drinker. Like I'm a. <laughs> let's like, be real here. Let's you know. I I should like and a country guy. Like I should be born oh, in Nashville more or less. Like if I went to the Titans, my career would probably be shortened. <laughs> uh, There's a reason they call it Nash Vegas, dude. Like man, it's a like, fucking party. I've I, never been. My dad says yeah. it's insane. Oh my I'm god. I'm like setting up a time where I know. Like I got a week. And I got a weak recovery. Like, yeah. I, it needs to be. Because I'm going to go. It's like, I'm going to treat it like more I would than try Vegas. to be single if you're in Nashville. That's, if you, I mean. I, I've you, heard. Yeah. <laughs> well, we yeah, went We uh, went to that game, the Broncos game in Nashville, probably six, seven years ago. Yeah. Fucking Elway was buckled at Tootsie's at the bar <laughs> no. the night before the game, Which, dude. Oh, yeah, he was dude. sitting there just fucking nobody. And in there, like, I mean, Elway's Elway, but, like, he's older now. Like, he doesn't look yeah. exactly. Like, people yeah. didn't recognize him a ton. Oh. But he's just sitting there just fucking pounding drinks so it wasn't before. urban they, we were out on broadway and so were all the broncos players <laughs> <laughs> it was the night before the fucking game so hey. that was pretty wild but they say broadway's sick yeah it's super sick yeah. so yeah, yeah that's big. like a must that's like a need on my list of san diego though is cool too san, san diego, diego yeah it's fun. pretty laid back though right laid back yeah new Dude. york la yeah yeah oh boy <laughs> <laughs> we may London, have to do a pod Nashville. today <laughs> yeah. Vegas, yeah, Vegas, find Nashville. fucking Singleton's a healthy scratch in Nashville. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> They're going to London, Nashville. Those are almost back to back with a bye week the in the middle. <laughs> yeah, you're like, I need some fucking time after that. I haven't counted. Flu like <laughs> symptoms for <laughs> flu like symptoms for Singleton the morning of the game in Nashville. A lot of vomiting. You must have got four a Michael Jordan games in a row. Are you ever gonna get healthy? <laughs> uh, you know, <laughs> I performed my best at that point. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's oh, fucking fuck, awesome. Dude. Well, we appreciate you guys joining us. Fucking oh. good luck this year. We, uh, like, we're obviously everybody, the city's fucking amped. Like, this team's going to be fucking badass. Like, getting Russ was obviously a huge deal. Like, just having having a guy that we, you know, like, I'm not going to talk shit about Drew Locke, especially on fucking on a podcast, but <laughs> like, it's just like, it's just a, not take the play out of it. It's just a different, like, expectation now you know and and having new coaching staff and all that shit fresh i'm i'm stoked for you guys and i think it's gonna be a fucking badass year and we need to get you guys out on the golf course and fuck need we, to yeah we need to we'll get your swing straightened out bro i've been telling you guys and, uh, whatever you want it we'll get you straight so hell yeah city park right here but 
What do you yeah. guys got going on this weekend? I, I, I'll play. This. <laughs> he's go, he's gone, but I'm I'm here all weekend. Shit, what am playing. I doing this weekend? Oh, I'm going to Chicago. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> so I'm out. I don't know nice. what the hell he's Also a great city to go out in. Oh, yeah. I'm looking forward to it yeah. for sure. Yeah, it's a great spot to fucking eat. That's for oh, sure. Yeah. I'm going to eat dish. my weight. 100%. Well, thanks again, boys. We really appreciate it. And hopefully yeah. we can do this again. Yeah, maybe, appreciate, uh, appreciate you guys having maybe us Maybe this on. fall. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, for sure.